Hey everybody, it is Friday the 5th of July and I uh, hope you enjoyed the extra day off. The markets took no rest here, uh, advancing to new all-time highs once again for the SPY and the NASDAQ. The Russell 2000 remains, as you know, I've been calling it a waste of time. We're up eight basis points for the year. Certainly there's a lot better action elsewhere. Semiconductors up 54% year to date. Uh, let's take a look at these charts and make some sense of it. Somebody uh, mentioned to me that my uh, cursor wasn't very visible, so I changed it blue. And uh, if that uh, helps, then please mention that in uh, YouTube, I think is where they asked that. So if you're on YouTube, by the way, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, uh, and uh, subscribe to the channel. This is uh, the new all-time high here for the S&P 500. You can see we broke that range as we spoke about. And now any subsequent pullbacks we see over the coming days and week uh, would be expected to find buyers somewhere near that 550 level. Prior resistance tends to act as support. We'll see that we have the same exact uh, um, theme here that, again, we saw new low volume for the year in the SPY. And I'll say, as I always do, that it simply does not matter. Only price pays. Some people complain that, you know, the market is only being held up by a certain number of stocks. Well, just buy those stocks then. Don't complain the other ones aren't working. Go with what works and manage risk as always. Of course, the market could fall apart, but we remain above a rising 20-day moving average, 50-day moving average, year-to-date VWAP, five-day moving average, etc. The NASDAQ also closed right into new all-time high after it broke this resistance here at 487-ish. You can see that uh, we've run nearly nine, uh, nine, 10 points here just in the last couple of days. And from the low uh, that began at the beginning of this month, uh, that anchor is going to be the one that we pay attention to in the near term, as well as, of, of course, other uh, anchored volume weighted average price levels. But for now, the month to date also happens to tie in with a uh, important low. So that adds a little bit more uh, importance to that level. Either way, we have a rising five-day moving average. There's no way I'm looking to sell this market short. When we were in this range over here, I was very careful to uh, make sure that everybody stood, uh, understood. It meant that we were cautious, not bearish. How can you be bearish when you have stocks like Apple at a new all-time high, Amazon at a new all-time high? Um, you know, the list goes on and on. Google, new all-time high. Meta at a new all-time high. Microsoft at a new all-time high. Netflix at a new all-time high. NVIDIA it looks like it's trying to uh, right itself here. As you know, I've been a little bit cautious on this. And the reason for that is that uh, we were stuck below the anchor from the all-time high here. That's that red anchor. And this purple anchor from the 10 for 1 stock split. Well, we got back above that. We're above a rising five-day moving average. You saw that. That, uh, this week we tested once again the anchor from this gap here that's this level here on the daily time frame and now if we can hold above 124 I think you look for new highs in the uh, Nvidia and you have to remember I'm a trader I'm not talking about where it'll be six months from now it doesn't matter to me if the stock breaks back down well guess what if it starts to break down, well, then I will look at this market and say that it has changed. It's more likely then to come back down to the 50-day moving average. That's what I was looking for, if you recall, last week. That is, if we broke this, we would come down to there. Well, we never broke below that level. Instead, we saw buyers exactly at that area right there to the penny. You just can't make that stuff up. This is why we pay attention to these anchors from key levels. And that's exactly where, the, as I said, the buyers uh, emerge. So... We pay attention to that and we manage risk. Uh, speaking of that, the semiconductors are continuing to march higher. I had pointed out the similarities of this rally right here to this rally right here and what it led to. And it still may do something similar to this in the coming weeks. But right now, while we're in this phase, we look at this and say 266 is the first level of potential support on a pullback and then most likely continues to move higher. It doesn't mean it might not break down, but right now the buyers are back in control. We're above a rising five-day moving average. I'm not going to be blinded by this, what's previously happened, and say that has to happen again. That's foolish. You look at what the market is doing right there in front of you. If you don't believe it, you don't sell it short. 
But instead, you say, okay, I'll sit on the sidelines and cash instead. Biotech stocks uh, still trying to stabilize here right at the rising 50-day moving average and 20-day moving average. That's these two, the blue and the green right here. So we're at a level that should hold us support. As I've mentioned, we had this high. We had a lower high. We had a lower high. This looks like another lower high, lower lows. And now if it can make a lower, uh, higher low rather, and then a higher high next week, I think that biotechs are still threatening to move to the upside. Our weekly picture shows a very potentially bullish uh, uh, chart here that if it could build from here, then I think you're going to see something like this and new highs before the end of the year. So we've just entered the second half of the year. Biotechs might be able to get that into that position where they can break higher and continue a nice move. Right now, there we're not quite ready yet. I haven't bought it. I'm not looking to buy it until we see maybe something like this over here next week. So I'll be keeping a close eye on that. I won't be paying much attention to the Russell 2000 because the Russell 2000 continues to be a waste of time. We're still right here at the year-to-date anchored volume weighted average price. That's a purplish line. And uh, we're in this range with the 20 below the 50. And they've been crossing back and forth, telling us no reason that, telling us what moving average crossovers typically tell us is they represent indecision, not a reason to act. For this market to uh, become constructive again, maybe it could do something like this. Rally up, take this high out, get people excited once again. They would then spit it out as it pulls back, and then maybe it could make a higher low and, and go higher. But for now, that's too many steps ahead to consider for next week, so I'm not really interested in that. Financial stocks continue to consolidate here with a higher lows. Uh, with a rising 20 and 50 day moving average. I don't trade financials. So, you know, if you trade them, then maybe you get involved with a stop under here. Uh, if there's something, you know, if it gets back above this level, I could see new all time highs once again. Energy names, as we mentioned, they got rejected at the declining 50 day moving average. And now they are breaking lower. I, that's not what I was hoping would happen, but the market doesn't care what I want to happen. Maybe this is a shakeout and it does this, and in a couple days uh, we can see that it recovers. For now, though, if you look at oil, uh, here's our daily chart of oil. We've had a pretty good run from 72.5 up to 84, so perhaps that needs to consolidate a little bit. I brought these charts up because I wanted to talk about Bitcoin. On Wednesday, I said, if it breaks below that 60 level, I would hope that we get a shakeout down towards 55. Well, we exceeded that $55,000 level, and we came down to the exact spot where we found buyers at the beginning of this year. The anchored VWAP from the beginning of this move in October of 2023. So we saw that anchor hold a support. I posted this prior to it, or right as it was on there uh, last night on Twitter. And then this morning, we saw in the overnight session that uh, this is where I told subscribers to Alpha Trends in the pre-market, if you want to buy it, it was right here, that if you want to buy it if, for a bounce, that you can get involved here with a stop underneath this level. I've taken a little bit off up in here, and I'm still long, looking for a rally maybe up towards that $60,000 uh, uh, level. But for now, it's looking like it's bouncing, and that's all I'm looking at it as. I'm not looking at, it. was that the low in Bitcoin? We'll know, as we always do, after the fact only. But Bitcoin is constructive in the near term, and uh, hope everybody uh, has a, had a good holiday and enjoy the rest of your weekend. That'll do it for now.